Hi, this is COMP 1010 at the University of Manitoba. I'm Dr. Celine Latulip, and today I'm going to be talking to you about data types, ints, and then introducing floating point data type. Okay, so Java and processing are both strongly typed language. That means that when you're programming in Java or in processing and you create a variable, you have to give that a data type. You have to say what kind of variable you're using. So everything, you can point to anything in Java or in processing and you can say what type it is. The type is always specified when it's declared. So there's eight main types that we call primitives. These are types that are actually handled directly by the hardware. We have int, long, short, and byte, float, double, boolean, and char. We're not gonna be talking about boolean or char today, so the other six are number types, and that's what we're focusing on today. So anything else that you use in processing or Java, like colors, that type of thing, those are what we call object types, and they're actually just sort of um, amalgamations of other primitive types. They're, they're collections of different primitive types that give you something more complex. We'll talk about those at some other point. So here are some examples of declaring some primitive um, variables. Int count equals zero, so that's a number type. Boolean square eyes equals false, so Boolean is a true false type. Float my GPA equals 3.7, so this is a number type that has a decimal or fractional part. And char symbol equals dollar sign, and that's a single character primitive type. So you may be asking, why do we need to specify these types? Why don't we just let the computer guess what we mean? And you have to remember that computers aren't able to guess your intention. They only hold ones and zeros. So you could have a variable stored in your computer's memory called my data that has this string of zeros and ones. Well, how do we know what that's supposed to represent? Is it supposed to be a number? Is it supposed to be a character? Is it supposed to be a fractional number or a whole number? We're not really sure. So if it was a type int, those ones and zeros actually would represent this number here. If it was a type float, maybe it would represent 673.2313, maybe. If it was a type color, maybe this would represent a purplish brown because it's got the parts that's red and the parts that's the green and the parts that's the blue all mashed together. I don't know. And just to hint here, note that the type color, which isn't one of our primitive types, it's an object type, it doesn't start with a lowercase letter, it starts with a capital letter. So you can always tell which ones are the primitives um, because the type actually starts with a lowercase letter. So you have to give my data a type so that the sequence of bits can be read in by the computer and interpreted in the right way. So we've already used ints, um, but there are other types of integers, whole numbers, and they vary in how much memory they take up, how much space they use in memory, and the range of values that they can handle. So we've already used an int, and an int is always stored in four bytes or 32 bits, so that's 32 ones and zeros, and the numbers that an int can store are in this range. So it's a pretty big range. But what if you need a bigger range than that? Well, there's a type called long, and it uses twice the memory, eight bytes or 64 ones and zeros. And it can handle much, much bigger numbers if you look at this range. There's also a type called short, which only handles two bytes or 16 ones and zeros. And that ranges from negative 32,000 approximately to positive 32,000. And then there's also a byte, which is only one byte and it's eight bits, and that can only handle the numbers negative 128 up to 127. So we're gonna typically use int, and that's sort of the standard in processing. Um, we would use long if you really needed really big numbers. So a bank card number, for example, would be a long number. And then in this class, we're never gonna use shorts or bytes. Only use that when someone else requires you to. Um, it's got some pretty specific use cases, uh, but they're fairly rare at this point. Okay, when you actually type in a, a value for an integer, you know that you can give it a plus or a minus sign, to, and plus is of course the default. So if you want a positive integer, you don't have to type the plus sign. But if you want a, an integer to be negative, you do have to type the negative sign. And then you need digits. And of course, you need at least one digit. Um, and if you type in a number like 17, 
it will be treated as an int. If you want that to be treated as a long and you want more space to be allocated in memory so that you can potentially store much longer numbers later, you need to add an L to it. So if you typed in the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, 1, 2 um, and assigned it to int x, that would be an error. That number is actually too big to be stored in an int. But if you put the capital L and you stored it in a long X, then that would be okay, all right? Um, and then this number, even with the L on, that's even too big to store in a long. You can't store numbers that big. Um, and you can store small numbers in long variable types. Um, just because you're not using all of that space right now, you might need it later, and so that, that's possible. So just a reminder when you're typing literal um, integer numbers in that you don't put any commas and you don't put any weird symbols like a dollar sign or units like kilometers or anything. It's just the number. All right, so we're used to working with integers now. They're great, but sometimes you actually want fractions. Um, An integer division only gives you the quotient, quotient. So if you divide five by two, you get two. You don't get 2.5. But what if you want the 2.5? What do you do? Well, then you have to use a different data type. And the data type that you use is the float. Okay, so floating point types, um, and there are two of them, they handle real data. The, the numbers with the decimal points, the fractional data. So float, which is the standard that we'll use, uses four bytes of memory um, and gives you approximately seven significant digits. There's a bigger version of a float, which is called a double, and of course it's double the amount of memory, so eight bytes, and you can get approximately 15 significant digits with a double. So the great thing about floating point numbers is that they allow fractions, but there is a kind of a catch here. They don't always give you exactly what you expect. They're not always 100% accurate. And you may be like, what? Computers are always accurate. Well, not quite. So think about this. Could you write in decimal point form the value one third with 100% accuracy? Well, not really because you write 0 0.33333 and it never ends, but you have to stop writing at some point. And so you're losing a little tiny bit of accuracy by not continuing to write threes forever. And the computer actually can't do 0 0.2 accurately. So why? Well, because in binary, it's actually an infinite number of zeros and ones. It looks like this, if you're curious. So 5.0 times 0 0.2 might give you 0 0.9999997, not 1.0. Or it might not. It sort of depends on how the hardware is exactly set up. So you just have to make sure that in your brain, you always think about the fact that floats and doubles are pretty accurate, but not 100% accurate. They're approximations. All right, so if you want to type in a floating point liberal, literal, then you need to put a number and you've got to have at least one digit um, and you've got to use the decimal point. You can also use E notation, which means, um, so if you have E plus 23, that means times 10 to the 23rd power. So in processing, Float is sort of the default fractional value you'll get if you do um, like 3.0 divided by 5.0, then you will get a float in return. You should know that in Java it's reversed. If you type in 3.0, it's going to be treated as a double unless you add an F at the end. And if you want a literal in processing to be treated as a double, you've got to add a D at the end. So let's take a look at some examples um, and, and note that in processing you can always tell whether something is an integer or a floating point literal by the absence or presence of the decimal point. So 5 is an int, 5L is a long. 5 point, and you don't even need to put the zero after it, 5 point is a float, 5 point D is a double, that means it'll take up double the amount of space. Okay, and so these things are different and the right type may not work depending on what you're trying to do. So you do need to understand the differences here. So when you have floating point numbers, you can use the same types of operations as integers, but this time division 
um, will give you fractional results. It won't just give you the quotient, and you can actually get fractional results from the, from the remainder of the modulo operator too. So 10 divided by three, when they're both integers, gives you three. That's integer division and you get the quotient. But 10.0 divided by 3.0 will give you 3.33. Now we're doing what you would expect, regular division. And you should note that if you've got one of these numbers is an int and one of them is a float, this will do the um, fractional division. It will give you 3.33. You'll only get integer division when both the numbers on both sides of the division sign are integers. So 10 mod 3, of course, these are both integers, and that does the remainder, and it gives you 1. 10.0 mod 3.0 will give you the same remainder, but it will give it to you as a float. All right, so a while ago, we went through an example, and we talked about how integer division can really cause us problems. And so we had an example that looks sort of like this. We create a canvas. We create this integer variable called percent, and we put 33 in it. And then we try to do 33 divided by 100 times 500. And because 33 is an int here, we have an int divided by an int and 100 doesn't go into 33 any times, so we get zero here and we get zero times 500 and this would not give us what we were expecting. This didn't work and it's because of this integer division. So we kind of fixed this by just rearranging the equation and we multiplied 500 by the percent first so that we got this really big number, 500 times 33, and then we divided that by 100 and so 100 went into that big number a certain number of times and that sort of worked for us. But, you know, maybe we don't always want to have to rearrange our equations. Maybe we just want to have a percent. So now we can use floats. We can work with decimals and we don't have to worry about the order of operations. So we can do something like this. Set our canvas. We create a float percentage, which is 0 0.33, and then we don't have to do the division by 100 at all. So now we have float target equals 0 0.33 times 500. And we could also do 500 times 0 0.33. This will give us one third of 500, whatever that might be, 165 or something. But it will give us, you should note, because we've got a float here, float times an integer, we will get a float um, result. So target also here has to be a float. And then we can use it in here. And all, all of our drawing functions can take floats, doubles, or ints. So it's fine that these are int literals and that this is actually a float. Um, now, there is a catch here. What if you tried to do this? If you tried to declare a type percent and you call it, you declared it as a float, and then you set it equal to 33 divided by 100, this is problematic. You will get zero. Processing will still do integer division because we have an integer divided by another integer. This will give zero. It won't give what you expect, okay? Even though we said we wanna put this into a float data type, right? So you would need to set this as 33.0 divided by 100 or 33 divided by 100.0. Okay, that's everything. Hope that helps you understand floats and op operations. Thanks.